Minister of Power Adebayo uh, Adelebu has vowed on behalf of the federal government, this is Nigeria now, to achieve 20,000 megawatts of power generation in the next three years. Now, the country is still struggling to do 4,000. The grid just collapsed earlier on today, as a matter of fact. Um, Adebayo has insisted, Adelabu has insisted that President Bolatinebu's administration will meet the 20,000 megawatt target by 2026. Speaking at the Nigeria Energy Summit in Lagos, he says he has diagnosed the issues to a large extent and found out that the solutions were not as difficult as people believe. Here he is. Powers our homes, drives economic growth, and is the cornerstone upon which the progress and prosperity of nations are built. Nigeria, a nation blessed with abundant natural resources, a rapidly growing population, and an expanding economy, stands a pivotal moment in its energy journey because the demand for accessible, reliable, and sustainable energy has never been greater than we have it now. The national energy mix comprises of 80% and 20% of transitional fuel and renewable hydroenergy respectively, guided by international best practices such as IHA sustainability assessment control. Despite this, our greatest challenges are the grid reliability and universal access to power for the unserved and the underserved. I am confident that the narratives in the power sector, which is confronted with several challenges, will change in the near future. The challenges we face, ensuring access to reliable and affordable energy for all, are quite complex. It ranges from issues of energy security, sustainability, to addressing climate change. Consequently, it will require collective efforts to summon these challenges in order to realize our dreams of socioeconomic development in our country. The Ministry of Power is focused on a balanced energy development that drives socioeconomic transformation. Thus, satisfying the future utility and sustainable development nexus of energy security, sustainability, and affordability. Thus, as we convene here today, we are united by a common purpose to address the critical challenges and seize the immense opportunities in the energy sector in Nigeria. The goal of this conference is not just to discuss these challenges, but to collaborate and implement concrete actions that will lead us towards a brighter and more sustainable energy future. We must therefore never underestimate the power of strategic collaborations in this pivotal sector. This conference should not just be another talk shop. We must arrive at workable solutions to resolve the identified challenges and leverage on the opportunities provided at this conference. Let me reiterate that in these challenges also lie incredible opportunities, such as unnecessary power from renewable energy sources, for example, solar, hydro, wind, etc., which will not only reduce our carbon footprint in terms of emission, but also create jobs and stimulate economic growth. Number two, investing in cutting edge technologies and innovative solutions that can transform the way we produce, transmit, distribute, and consume power. And number three, collaborating, sharing knowledge, and building partnerships that transcend borders and ideologies. And lastly, other new opportunities amid the fuel subsidy removal include greening the transport system with electric vehicle and hydrogen technology. Achieving a reliable, functional, affordable power to all Nigerians is not a task that is not possible. It is quite possible, I must tell you this. Nigeria has a long-term energy expansion plan of about 60,000 megawatts 
by 2060. We have a medium time target of 30,000 megawatts by 2030. These are not targets that are not achievable. Like the informal markets man, Ade Yesufu, just mentioned. I just came back from South Korea to attend the Just Energy Transition and Agri Transformation Conference. And South Korea, I can tell you, they had an amazing story to tell. This was a country about less than 50 years ago. They were a net recipient of foreign aids. Even Nigeria was sending food aids to South Korea during the war, before the ceasefire of 1953. They were generating less than 4,000 megawatts of power. But today, a country that is a little less than 50 million population, they generate well over 130,000 megawatts of power. It's quite amazing. They're not just generating. They're able to transmit, uh, distribute, and get this to the doorsteps of the end users. So who says 60,000 megawatts is not achievable in less than 40 years in Nigeria? It is. The collective effort of all of us is actually required for this. But let me mention the fact that it is not just enough to generate power. As I have seen that, we are actually in a very good position, given the kind of expression of interest to invest in Nigeria by generating companies. To achieve the 30,000 megawatts by 2030, and 60,000 megawatt by 2060. But how do we get this to end users? Because it is the end user that they call the last mile that pay for all the segment operators in the value chain. If you cannot transmit as much as 80, 85% of the generated power to distributor, distributing companies, and they're getting it to the customers, then we are wasting investments. Beyond improving our transmission and uh, distribution infrastructures, we must invest in metering technology. Today we have over 8 million meter gap in Nigeria. If you can reduce or even eliminate this gap and come up with technology to ensure that collections are monitored and we are able to collect nothing less than 90% of power distributed. Of course, liquidity is assured in this country.